we have seen Vladimir Putin more willing to speak openly about his ambitions in the region in a much more emotional way than perhaps he's ever spoken about any other state outside of the West. He's really very much pushing this Eurasian pact forward. So in discussing all of that, do you think that Japan as well as South Korea will also pivot towards the opportunities that a Russia, a more open and emphatic Russia, is willing to offer? Well, right now we uh, can see a big game of Putin's big game in Asia. Putin uh, doesn't want to be just a part of Chinese policy and of the Chinese step forward to Europe and to the West. And that's why Putin tries to establish more friendly and more um, effective relations with uh, South Korea and with Japan. I think that maybe this year or maybe the next year we can see a drastic change in the Japanese or South Korean uh, policy of Russia. So, uh, for example, right now, even under the sanctions, uh, Russia and uh, Japan uh, step by step develop its relation in economic uh, field. For example, they discuss the agriculture projects in the in, in Russia, and uh, we uh, Russia wants to develop more economic ties with South Korea. So it means that Russia should be and would be more open minded to the Asia, not just to the traditional partners like China, Vietnam, or Mongolia, but also to okay. Japan and to the South Korea. Do you think Putin is in some ways softening his language when it comes to Asia? in a very strategic way? Not softening. I think it, it became more flexible. And m maybe he started to understand uh, the Asian psychology and Asian mentality. So it means be more flexible and to provide more uh, special preferences to Asian countries, uh, to Russia. So in this way, Russian policy towards China or towards Japan became much more flexible and much more soft. By flexible and soft, are we saying that he's more diplomatic than we've ever seen him before? And is that really what's going to characterize relations in the decade ahead? Well, sure, it's more diplomatic. And uh, he tries to understand uh, not just Russian problems, but also uh, problems of Asian countries towards Russia. So I think Putin is ready to, uh, to develop a new stage of negotiations with Japan maybe after sanctions, uh, speaking about the so-called Northern Territories. And uh, Putin is ready to, you know, to make Russia a more Asian country. It means that, for example, today the uh, general trade of Russia in Asia is close to be 1%. For example, the FDI, uh, the Chinese FDI to Russia is close to be 1.5% from all foreign uh, direct investments to Russia. It means nothing. It means that before this time, Russian policy toward Asia was really unsuccessful. So Putin tries, uh, tries to, uh, to develop it and to raise to the new stage. Okay, finally, we've been talking about Asia, Russia. Nowhere in this conversation have we mentioned the West. Will it play a role as these ties and relations just deepen further? Well, sure, West is the uh, main partner uh, in uh, this game between China, Russia, and North Korea. Uh, some people think that the uh, turn to the uh, east uh, could be explained by the sanctions, uh, eastern sanctions or uh, anti-western sanctions of Russia. It's not the case because this turn to the east uh, was uh, worked out long before the beginning of this Ukrainian campaign. So it means that it was ready and this campaign just speed up all events. Uh, but I think, and it's just my personal opinion, that Russian government wants to come back to the West, but in the new level, in the new stage, more high and more reliable. Because uh, Russia today, first of all, wants to build a new camp with China and maybe with other countries like Vietnam or maybe even North Korea. And then in this case, to turn back to West and to play more active and, uh, say, more effective role in Western policy. And perhaps be a more formidable foe in the process. Dr. Maslov, thank you so much for joining me today.